everyone, welcome to the show. I'm James. And I'm Phil. And it's time for anything. Today we have our friend, our guest, Haziel here with us. Hey, yo, what's up everyone? And we'll be talking about perspective. Perspective, perception, people's different views. Point of view. Yeah. Things like, like that. Is what you things. see, but with your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to begin? You got a whole sheet of notes here. I'm, I'm interested in, to hear your thoughts. All right. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for inviting me on. Here. Yeah. Oh, Dude, 100%. Epic, yeah. It's always nice talkers. to have the people we care about and talk with them and kind of learn what they think. It's, 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 it's a fun time. Yeah. But can I preface this by saying what I went through yesterday? <laughs> sure. sure. So there was like a we went with a group to arcade. Okay. And we went and played some games. I played DDR like four times. Nice. It's kind of epic. I'm pretty bad at it though. Because <laughs> I, mean, I get D rank on like the easiest difficulty. Dude, I don't even think I could begin to play DDR. Like, I mean, I'm sure you know. Obviously, with practice, I could. You know, anyone practices something, but like I, I, I haven't Tension. ever actually tried no, DDR. Yeah. It's so. not an easy game. No, it's for sure. And I'm especially bad at it because I'm bad at physical things. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> so, um, so I, I do that, and we go to this this diner, and it's it's like the Park City Diner, mm. and I wasn't really hungry because I just had Chinese food before I left. But mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I'll go with everyone, you know, just hang out. So we go. It was like 15 of us. And we go there and we get decent service. I wouldn't yeah. say it's the best, but, you know, they did their best. Yeah. There was like a 15-man brawl over there <laughs> in the diner. What? <laughs> yeah. Like people, like, beating each other up? Yeah, even the staff got involved. What? Why? Wow. The staff was in the diner fighting these drunk guys. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> And um, I'm just watching, like I'm just like in amazement because I'm like, like, what's happening? Right now? I'm just eating cheesecake to this. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eating dessert and watching the fight. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I guess this is happening. So, and so like, this old dude, he's like 60 years old. He's in the fight. He's just like some Greek guy. I think he might be the manager or something. Yo, he, he he was he was throwing punches. He was throwing punches. That's just bizarre. I just had to include that. I'm that's sorry. just no, that's just like something that you'd see in a movie. It's just and hey, there you go. It just it tr draws in our listeners something interesting that happened yesterday. <laughs> Epic. But why do you think that fight started? Do you think it was because of different views, different people's perceptions on things, and therefore they were? It could have been more like the dude was drunk. <laughs> and he just <laughs> didn't have any inhibitions and he yeah. just did not care. Yeah. And then which could alter his perception of everyone else. Because that's actually a good point, yeah. If he doesn't care, he doesn't view people as like actual people with feelings, mm -hmm. then he would just be like, oh, I don't care, you know? Yeah. I'll, I'll throw a punch at you and like think of him as an object, you know? Yeah. Which is not okay. Like almost, well, I guess every altercation would just be because of a different point of view right like duh potentially well i mean i mean i don't think every single like some people just agree to fight i guess that's true yeah, yeah. but it wasn't like like oh we're gonna fight like at three yeah. it was just like yeah. i'm punching you and yeah. this is happening it's usually over a disagreement and right. disagreements are usually over different perception right of reality yeah from what i've heard they like everyone else at the table the consensus con consensus was um he said something to the waiter or something like that. Oh, and, boy. And then the waiter, like, gave, like, a smirk remark back to him or something because, like, he was being rude. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I wouldn't, it was, like, 2 in the morning, so I'd be like, if you're coming in here being disrespectful, you know, like, yeah. you're gonna just, get get it. It, just get out of here. Yeah. So he didn't like that too much, and I guess he threw a punch at him. Dude. Wow. That's freaking crazy. I can just imagine a whole restaurant of people just throwing punches at each other. Yeah, it was, it was, there were a group of 15 people, like, cause I guess they just came from a club. Yeah. Did anyone record it? Um, part of it. No, oh, dang. I didn't record it because I was just like watching them. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's happening? I don't want to get shot. <laughs> it was bad. There was, it was like, the whole, you, 
There was like full of people the whole front of the store. Well, especially when people are flying off the handle like that, you never know if they're gonna look over and be like, "Are you recording this shit?" And then you're a target, and you're like, "I'm just trying to eat my cheesecake, bro." Like, and exactly. the next thing you know, you're getting punched by a drunkard. Yeah. And I gotta say, um, from what I was, from what I heard, the Belgian waffles weren't that good. <laughs> <laughs> what did you have? You had cheesecake and what else? I had cheesecake. That was it. Because I had Chinese food, so I wasn't really hungry. Oh, that's right. You did say that. But, um, like, two other people got, like, waffles. They said it tasted like sawdust. What? <laughs> no wonder the dude was angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really funny, though. But I left a $5 tip because it was a waitress, our waitress's first day there. No. <laughs> and no. There was a 20-man brawl or something like that. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Being your first day at work and then everyone just starts killing each other. It's ridiculous. I mean, um, the cheesecake was only like four bucks. So I'm like, you know what? You deserve it. You're going to put <laughs> up to this. With this. Yeah. yeah. It was ridiculous. I guess I'm interested to know, like, where did you come up with this? Because I know it was probably, I guess, a couple of months ago we were kind of, I mentioned, you know, being on the podcast and then you were like, hey, I kind of want to talk about perception and things like that. But like... I guess I'm just expand on that more. Like, what are you thinking about? Like, what have you been thinking about? Um, I know you have, like, some notes, but, like, kind of just open up your brain here. I kind of want to hear your thoughts. Press the open brain button. Nice. Um, I'm, it's more or less thinking just at work. Just, like, because, like, when you're at work, you're not allowed to think about anything but work. But then when you get, like, proficient at your job, then you're like, all right, I'm on autopilot. Right, you're going through motions, Yeah. And then you could be like, all right, and you just let your mind drift and then just start thinking. Basically, I was just like, oh, you know what? That changed my perspective. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting thing to happen, you know, because like you can see one thing one way and then the more you think about it, you form more opinions about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It's like, it's like studying a topic without any real knowledge, but just getting a different view on it right yeah because yeah. you're being kind of like introspective like you're kind of like looking at yourself and how you view that thing and then you start to think about like how oh, other well, people right yeah. yeah how do they view it right yeah. how's that a different view than how i'm viewing it and why exactly. is it different yeah um you had mentioned the the, the person in the brawl was probably drunk and no he changed, definitely was yeah <laughs> and, and that changes your your perspective on everything mm -hmm. intoxicants in general drugs alcohol yeah uh, that's the easiest way, I think, to change your perception mm -hmm. and your perspective. Uh, not always for the better. Right. I, I mean, yeah, sometimes you end up in a 15-man brawl in a diner at 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah, but. seriously. I won't go into detail about other things that happened, but it, it, was, just, it was just not not no experience I was looking for at a diner. <laughs> <laughs> it's also strange to think that, and I mean, this is obviously like a no duh, but but like everything that you're raised with changes everything about how you view everything, right? I mean, just look at like different cultures and stuff. Everyone has an entirely different perception of just how you should eat at the dinner table or how you should talk to your friends or talk to your elders and things like that. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous how you could, I mean, even just brothers and sisters have different in, like ways in which they think that the world should be handled and how you should go about things it's just there's like no constant well, a lot of it does come from like you said like upbringing yeah how you were raised yeah. but it's also just past experiences in general within sure. your community within your society mm -hmm. the experiences that you've had there form how you view the world yeah see i was uh looking at a documentary okay it was like about the Khmer in ancient Cambodia. And they the people believe that the king was actually God himself, mm -hmm. like as like a person. Interesting. And they did like a bunch of work. They had irrigation systems that were like really precise. All for this person. Basically. Right. And I just that's just interesting because like or to me, because like they they really would, like, go to war and stuff like that. Over religion. Yeah. Yeah. 
over just how they viewed the world. Right. They thought that their God was manifested as a human mm -hmm. and was leading them, and that was their perception on everything. That's, exactly. That's the point of view that they took when looking at everything else. I think that's definitely one thing that's really hard to do actively is, is say, like, maybe my viewpoint's wrong. And I know that that can be very simple with certain things. Like, oh, you should actually be eating this way if you're trying to, I don't know, like, you know, accomplish this sort of thing. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I could, I could easily change that. But when you use something that's so ingrained into you, like, again, cultural things, it's so difficult to just say, like, oh, well, maybe the way that it's been taught my entire life is wrong. So many people don't want to even say that. I think a glaring example in today's society, which isn't really a realm that I want to get into, but racism, mm -hmm. right? It's, mm -hmm. you, you have an older generation that just perceives the world in a certain way because that's how they were raised. It's, like you said, ingrained in them. Yeah. Right? And it's been difficult for them to switch their perspective. Mm -hmm. Although they should. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, on a serious, like, side of it, I think astrology is like a kind of perspective changing belief like uh, like like the like the gemini taurus the, sort of thing and okay because like your horoscope for yeah vex like because um i actually met someone who believes like in like chi energy and like mm. like he's, he believes like there's like energy and like different types of minerals and stuff i mean i personally don't believe it like but, he's one of those people that like would wear a crystal if he's looking for like yeah. strength at one day or something. Yeah, yeah. And like, and I I personally don't believe it. And as long as you're not harming anyone or like harming yourself, even. Yes, right. Like and, that's it. Is as long as you're not just being an asshole to other people. I generally don't care what you think. <laughs> and I, I think kind of towards your point is that person believes that these things are real and that shifts his point of view on them. Exactly. And it, mm -hmm. Throughout the day, if he's looking for strength and wearing his crystal, uh, he will actually believe that that crystal is giving him strength and will actually maybe have more strength throughout the day simply because he believes it. And right. that could be due to the placebo effect, but right. it, yes, works. Yes. Right. Yes, but it, it works. Yes. It works. It works. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying to Shafiq, um, like when we were hanging out about how he was saying, he was like, oh, there's these, this pair of shoes that he like really wanted growing up. And then he finally got them, and then he felt like he was faster. And Oh, I remember those. those I saw those shoes. And I was like, you know, it probably actually worked, all because of placebo, right? Like, if you're in a pair of shoes that you think you're going to be faster wearing, you probably will be faster because you are You'll pushing yourself harder. harder. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But it would just be, like, subconscious, mm -hmm. almost, and then yeah. you won't even realize it. Right. There is no physical difference, but just the way that you're perceiving it lets you... Kind of push yourself further. Exactly. Potentially. Hmm. With some things. Well, it's been medically proven. Like, I think they did it on Miss Busters, too. Like, pl the placebo effect works. Yeah. For sure. I think that there's some things that won't give you a placebo effect. Like, you can't placebo yourself into flying. Right. Yeah, that's... 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 <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. But you can probably placebo yourself into, like, having less back pain. Like, if you just believe that you don't have as much back pain, you probably won't compared to someone who says, oh my god, my back is in agony every day. Like, it's probably going to hurt more because you're focused more on it. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, I don't know. Maybe the minerals help. I, I, I couldn't say anything. I don't, yeah, that, that's I don't have any like how, evidence to say otherwise. How so. do you know, right? It's like, but it doesn't, but it just, it works for them. So it's like, whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, all right, let me try to manifest this energy and make a, a Kamehameha wave. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Could you imagine if that were possible? Like, yeah, that would be awesome. Like, if he, if he could do that, I'd be like, you have me. You know what? I want to I wanna shoot some spirit bomb. I shoot a spirit bomb. All because of these crystals. Yes. I'll just wear this crystal around my neck, and the next thing I know, I can go Super Saiyan 3. Yeah, that would be pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but what else you got here? So I was I was thinking like um, our brains we, we perceive our knowledge that we hold in our in ourselves like like kind of like com like at least I do like a computer but we're more like kind of we're like more growing because we have to build those neurological pathways mm -hmm. 
And it's constantly changing if we don't, like, repeat. Like, let's say you knew how to do this in, like, when you were a kid. But you never did it again. So that learned that, that. that natural talent's gone. Yeah. Hmm. Whereas a computer, if you install a program on a hard drive, that program will run the same way until the hard drive craps out. Yeah. Basically. Uh, but with people, like you said, like, you can learn something and forget it four years later. Hmm. Or you can continue practicing and make it better. Exactly. Except yeah. we're just worse than computers because <laughs> like, forming new neural pathways over the age of 25 is apparently way harder. It's difficult, yes, but... I mean, the fact that we can do it, I that, think, that's just true. makes us better than computers. Yeah, because computers guess, yeah. can't change at all. Like, we, people we could change. Fi- yeah, if, if humans physically change the hardware of the computer. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. But, I mean, we could also physically change our hardware. I mean, you cut off your arm and attach a robotic arm. There you go. <laughs> you got a that's actually arm. true. I'm actually trying to transplant my brain into a robot. Yeah. And then I could yeah. be an android. Become RoboCop. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Because then you could you could travel in space without having to worry about your body yeah. degrading. Wait, what was that movie that we watched, James, where that person's consciousness got put into a robot and he like had a panic attack and killed himself? Uh, it was uh, yeah. It was selfless. Like a, no, that wasn't it. It was a really low budget movie with Keanu Reeves. They like yeah, it was Keanu like this Reeves. guy was like dying or something and was like in a coma. So they like mapped his brain. The hell I think that's what happened. That? And they yeah, like put him in a robot. And then brutal. they like oh replicants, or, replicants, yeah, replicants. Yeah. Something, like something like that. Replicants. I think so. And then they like booted him up and he's like just starts bashing his own face in because he yeah. like realizes he can't feel his body and he's like where am I? What is happening? So he just tries to like kill himself. Oh so man, that could happen. That's, <laughs> so, that's not cool. No, it's not cool at all. It's freaking terrifying. It's hey, just where... just hook me up to some video games. I'll be like on that twenty four seven. There you go. Yeah. yeah, Jesus. Jack in. And... Become a oh, diamond at siege finally. <laughs> but I I feel like we should be constantly trying to change our perceptions, and maybe not like going out of the way to do it. Well, I don't know. I mean. Sometimes you want to go out of the way to change them on purpose, right? I think you have to go out of the way to... uh, You have to go out of the way to look at something from a different perspective. Yes. Changing... Not not saying that you're actively trying to change it, but at least try to understand it. Stepping into somebody else's shoes is a decision. It doesn't just happen naturally. Sometimes it does, like... Like, uh, like my perception on drunk people mm. was like, oh, they're, they're just, you know, they're stumbly, but, you know, they're all right. And then my perception changed when I went yeah. to that diner at 2 yeah. in the morning. <laughs> I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> they're brawling. <laughs> yeah, your perception can be forcibly changed. Um, but going out of your way to look at something from a different perspe- perspective uh beneficial mm-hmm. um but you generally do have to go out of your way to do it yeah you it have to be like to a recognize push. that hey i'm looking at this through my eyes like let me look at it from somebody else's you do run into a problem where like how do you gauge when you should adopt a new point of view because like i mean you have certain people who are very convinced that Bill Gates is chipping us and that 5G is causing brain cancer. And uh, I'm not going to say that those are true because I have no reason to believe that. But it's like, when do you, where do you draw the line? Like, you know, you could have your, you could have three of your friends telling you, hey, this is how something should be. And then you think, oh, three of my friends are telling me this. I should believe it. But you're actually all just wrong and lost. Well, I think you don't change your beliefs about something unless you're fully convinced well yeah that's a good point but you should always look at things from a different point of view because you don't have to change your belief just because you're looking at something in a different light yeah i think when you like get enough information that you could start to question what your perception is i think that's when yeah you start to change your perspective a little bit tipping point Yeah. yeah yeah It definitely comes from information and knowledge about whatever it is your belief is. Mm -hmm. Uh, And sometimes you get more information, more knowledge, and your belief still doesn't change. Right. That's entirely possible, and that's why it's a belief. It's it's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Not like set in stone, like 
Right. You just, I don't know what I was going with that. Yeah. It is yeah. very aggravating, and I mean, I'm obviously guilty of this, and, and, and almost everyone is, but when you when people don't understand that, like, I feel like I already said this, though, like, it's, it's okay for other people to look at something entirely differently than you do. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, there's like, no problem with that. Like, you mentioned, like, racism and stuff like that, and it's just really frustrating when someone locks down on something and says, no, like, I refuse to even say, or I, I refuse to even consider what you're saying. Like, that's that's just ignorance there, and that doesn't help anyone. Right. But I don't, I don't know. I just... I think in general, just belittling people that are different and might have a different view is generally just not a good thing yeah. to do. No, right. Yeah. Why, why would you do that? You know, yeah. what, what is the end goal of that? To make them believe what you believe? Exactly. Why would you want that? Yeah, if, it's, if, it, you, if you have to be antagonistic to get someone to be persuaded, then, mm-hmm. like, did you really persuade them? Right. <laughs> and now, you know, there are cases of things like racism that maybe you should push a little harder to try to change somebody's perspective uh yeah that's a good point but not like forcibly because yeah because I mean, then they can just retaliate yeah because they're already they're already being not nice to some people what's stopping them from not being nice to you mm-hmm. hmm. and it, it is sort of this limitation of being open-minded you can be open-minded, you can be welcoming and open to other people's point of view, perspective on things, but you can still be locked down in your beliefs. You could look at it, look at this same belief in a thousand different lights and never change your belief. Hmm. It's sort of this limitation that, that humans have, I think. We, we like to stick to our guns. Right. We like to be very habitual. ignorant in a way. Yeah, yeah, very right. happy. Yeah, because it, it's almost like you you don't know when to admit you're wrong. Because just I mean, it just we just keep coming back to this. Like someone who is racist is so convinced that they're right because oh, uh, millions of people I was raised with thought this way, and this is how culture was and everything. You're gonna tell me I'm wrong. You're gonna tell me millions of people are wrong. It's like, well, yeah, like, sorry. Yeah, sometimes but, <laughs> that just is how it is. Yeah, sometimes you're actually just wrong, mm-hmm. even when millions of people think it's right. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, but I think as a kid, you have like a limited pool of knowledge that you can access. Because mm-hmm. like the way I viewed like money was like it's a static thing and. You know, I never really earned it as a kid, so I only was like, oh, I had, like, a few sparing opportunities to get money. Mm-hmm. So, like, I would go to, like, the corner store and be like, I have $5. I can get whatever I want because everything was, like, 25 cents. So <laughs> I was like, all right, bet I'm going to grab all this stuff and then skedaddle. But then, like, now, like, now I'm making my own money and, like, starting to realize the value of a dollar. It's like money isn't a static thing. It's really fluid. Even trading on the stock market, like all that is is like a number. Mm. Like I'm so used to having the dollar bill, like a physical thing. Like Yeah, money is just numbers now. Yeah, it's just numbers. Yeah. yeah. And that changes like how I look at it because like whenever I use a card, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to swipe the card and I'll get my thing that I want. Mm. without even realizing like oh i'm spending this much money like Mm -hmm. about having like the physical like thing me like getting my wallet out you're not physically losing it you're not just giving it it's just right it's almost like it's not even happening exactly server yeah and yeah yeah it's it's like it's not happening right it's just like automatic and then you're just like all right Mm -hmm. i'm gonna just buy this i need this so i'm gonna get it and you said like you mentioned being a kid and it makes me think of uh kind of what we learned in Mr. Yu's psych class. So he was saying that when you're a kid, your ability to wrap your head around certain things is limited because of your cognitive capacity. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think it was I think it was like before you're nine years old or something, you can't even conceptualize the idea that Santa Claus can't make it around the entire planet to everyone in one night. You're just like, oh well, why? Why not? Like why not? I don't get it. Why is that not possible? 
you just your your entire perception of reality is like just in this tiny little box and you're like oh well everything is just magical and works however i want it to and some people grow up carrying those certain mindsets into their life of just thinking like like they're almost living in a fantasy world or that they don't they're not like at grips with reality so then you have some people who are like literally kids and i don't know it just i don't i don't just i just thought of that i'm just thinking like some people just can't you can't even explain certain things to them when they're adults because they just didn't ever grow up like maybe their brain just didn't develop and they are still like 12 and they just don't get things it does happen and like because you could have a different mental age and yes than your physical age which i think almost like everyone does probably to a certain degree i mean i'm sure there are some people who are like you know close but they're probably also how do you measure that yeah you You know how how do you say this is the standard for a 25 year old's mental age exactly you have to get like a i don't even know like a national average on how much knowledge you have about the world like it's it's so conceptual that yeah it's almost like you have to get like every person and then just like put it on a scale like yeah. it doesn't really make any it's too much but for sure some people have uh, a less mature mentality for their age mm. they could be 30 but act like a 20 year old yeah or they could be 20 and act like a 40 year old <laughs> you know it, it just i think depends on your situation in life um who you are your past experiences and I think that that all influences point of view and perspective as well. Um, Great tie-in. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's um, beautiful. Your like who you like your situation in life, your stance, who you are, the position that you hold, maybe at a company. These are these things are what you know, the major influences on your perception of everything. Yeah, um, it, they become your values. Yeah, to a yeah. degree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's why you know, just American politics, right? You you have red versus blue. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's a weird system. We won't get into that. It's almost like but, Washington said, like, don't separate into parties. And well, he didn't did. say don't do it. He said be careful about doing it. Fair enough. Anyway, uh, moving on from <laughs> another so, topic so, for another day. So you know, somebody uh, who is pretty well off financially, mm-hmm. living in a pretty gated community um like a not, not physically gated community but like, because those are those two exist but like a bubble right they yeah in a bubble even yeah. in suburbia too sorry to cut you no off. no yeah that's that's what i mean like suburbia right? yeah um you have these people that have this specific spe- specific position yeah in the world specifically in america and that influences heavily uh who they elect for their politicians he, and yeah, exactly. how they spend their money mm-hmm. and this is all their pers- it's based on their perspective of the world mm-hmm. exactly based on their stance in the world their position i just wish there was some way to create like a global standard of like beliefs but the problem you're already at an impasse when you realize that the beliefs that you think are right that you're going to attempt to indoctrinate everyone into believing could just be wrong or it will change or it will change right uh i don't think there's any way any way to like create like a solid like foundation without make it come off as like a religion uh okay like yeah because then it's essentially just like the 10 commandments or like the 100 commandments (laughs) in this day and age also it's very difficult you have the internet you have the freedom and Free, the freedom of flowing ideas. Yeah. You have sharing concepts globally where uh, in Macedonia, uh, you didn't really have that. So you had a similar societal structure with the same tenets for their, for their laws and the same religion. People probably lived very similar every century. That's true. Uh, yeah. Where now we have vastly different uh societies every uh, decade every decade yeah Yeah. Uh, i mean the world now is different than it was at the beginning of this century well you're so right and yeah like just the fact that the internet lets you share ideas like crazy people are just forming new opinions left and right all the time that's that's why style changes constantly too 
like, you know, you've got, ooh, this is how people dressed in the 90s, this is how people dressed in the 80s, because you've got just such a quick passing of information. It was weird because, like, it feels like every 10 years in, like, the... 20th century, mm-hmm. there was something different going on each yes. decade. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now it feels like it's an, like amalgamation of just like, all right, it's like, whatever. It feels yeah. like a mixture of all the other stuff. Like, I look at uh, I look at style now, and sometimes I see the way people are dressed, and I'm like, oh, that's that, that guy looks very 70s, or sometimes I'm like, oh, that person looks very 80s looking, and I feel like the style now is almost just like an amalgamation of the way people used to dress mm. in the I 20th century. I also think it's difficult to pin major events and the way that life is to a certain decade that you're living in 50 Uh, years down the line we're going to look back at the early 2000s and the 2010s and the 2020s mm. and say well these are the defining things for each decade but when you're in it you don't even when you're in it it's just how life is right just like kids pop Yes. Because yes. they're like, yeah, 100%. Yeah. they're like the best of the twenty, the two thousands, and I'm like, yo, I remember that song, and then like I felt like I viewed the the, the I viewed, viewed time differently depending on the, which decade it was, because like oh, well, we actually... I could hear the music and I'd be like, oh, okay, I know how that's gonna be like. It's yeah. gonna be like, yo, the but ba- reality, it's just like. It's the same as this, but without internet, if it's before, mm-hmm. like, a certain time. Probably, like, in the 80s, before 80s. It's, uh, sorry, I was just thinking, we, we, you just mentioned time, now you're perceiving time differently. We, like, just, we just did an episode on Andre's podcast about time. Um, and I don't remember where I was going with this thought. Oh, um, yeah, so, like, you're, you're perceiving things, like, you're perceiving time a certain way, depending on how old you are or whatever, but, like, then as exactly like James just said, like 20 years from now, we're going to look at the way things are right now and be like, oh, well, retrospectively, this is how things were. And it works the exact same way with mindsets. And that's why, I mean, I have to remind myself of this, but I wish more people were like this, of just deciding to look at the other side of the argument because it gives you that, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, if you're a creationist and you want to refute evolution, I would like to say you should probably do a lot of research on it so that way if you're trying to counteract someone's point, you know what you're talking You've about. You've already found the holes in the argument yes. that they're making. Yeah. You also might find, potentially, that you end up adopting the belief that you were trying to refute, which, if anything, is a good thing because now you've realized whatever it is which that is, you're doing that with. I think why some people are so... Afraid. hesitant and afraid of doing that because yeah. they don't want to be wrong in right. their belief. They don't want to change beliefs. It's easier to stay static. Right. And even if they get the information, it's not whether they have the information. It's like... Whether or not they want to believe it. Yeah. You could you could believe that, oh, let's say Neptune has uh, orange green aliens on it. I mean, no one could prove it unless you go there. Because then, if you, even if you get a drone over there and be like, oh, we proved that there's no no aliens or anything there. They could be like, look at that rock. It kind of looks like an alien. Yeah, if you're really trying to either believe something or not, you're you're like never going to accept what's actually just right in front of you. Exactly. Right. Or you could, all, you could change the evidence in your favor. Mm-hmm. Right, because you're just so locked which, into your point of view. Which is also what consistently happens in the media. Uh, today oh yeah and it's yep. just how people use evidence now they mm-hmm. take the parts that they need they use it for their argument or mm-hmm. for their belief and they, just throw and they ignore the rest it makes me think back again to the whole like bill gates is microchipping people okay like <laughs> based on my perception i'm like no that's not happening right okay but in the world we live in I wouldn't be surprised if I found out it was true, which really just shows that it's like you just said the media, the media shapes the way that most people view the world. Absolutely. And it's absolutely terrifying to think that we've got people running around like and and their entire perception of reality and how like the government works and the United States and culture is all just based on what they see on the like six o'clock news. Mm -hmm. It's like, holy shit, dude. And like. To further on the media aspect of it, I 
I used to always think the me- when people said media, it was like, oh, you mean like the news? That's like the image I get in my head. Like, mm. oh, you're talking about news broadcasters like on TV. But now the media is like... It's everything. It's, it's everything. Anything you're bombarded with. Anything people, internet. an opinion about something. YouTube, exactly. Instagram, social Snapchat media. ads. Social media is a big place. Mm-hmm. I mean, that it's, is probably like half of all media anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, like outside of your home, anything could be media. Like yeah. people yelling across the street and be like, hey, mm. Mm. Uh, I don't like this bagel sandwich. <laughs> Tastes bad. Hmm. And be like, oh, I don't like that. I'm yeah. not going to go there for a oh, bagel sandwich. Well, I, that bagel sandwich is bad. Even mm. though you've never had it. Exactly. You heard somebody else say it and now you just assume it's bad. And that could go with anything. They could take any part. It doesn't matter. Like if you're hearing it from the second hand, you'll form an opinion on it already. Yeah. Also, like your your physiology changes the way you perceive the entire world. I mean, just think about like the fact that I'm colorblind. Like, yeah, I I don't probably see things very differently, but definitely sometimes, uh, like it happens often enough. I'll look at something and be like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's a nice blue. And someone's like, that's dude, that's just like straight up purple. I'm like, well, shit. You know, my entire perception of like colors and everything. I mean. <laughs> My second grade art teacher had to talk to my parents because apparently I had, like, disturbing colors in my <laughs> stuff because, like, I just didn't know what I was painting with. You know what I mean? It was, like... And then and then I see, like, right here you have written down, like, glasses. And I was thinking about that, too, right? Did you, you ever, like, you drop them down for a second and you bring them back up and you realize that, like, objects are slightly in a different spot than they like are when you have them on? Yeah. And I'm, like, oh, I'm actually seeing everything, like, an inch higher than it really is all the time because of just my glasses. Mm. It's well, like so weird. Also, because our brains are guessing machines. We're constantly trying to guess. Mm. And that's not just with, like, about, like, ideas. That's, like, actually what we're sensing and what we're seeing. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're in a dark room, there's not much light. You can't tell me what color, like, that, like, like stop sign is. Or, right. Like, if it's, well, if it's I mean, a stop sign, you well, guess it's red, but I see your have point. Previous knowledge. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I, I see your point. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's kind of, I know it's red, but it's kind of looking blue, you know? Like, you, you're guessing at that point. Mm-hmm. Like, you, and we could guess faces, too. Like, if, let's say, look at, like, uh, NASA pictures, people think there's Bigfoot there <laughs> on, the, on Mars. They see, they see the rocks. It looks kind of like blurry. It's kind of hazy. Like you know, wait, yeah. people kind of we look for we look for patterns. And exactly. Wait, people think Bigfoot's on Mars. Did yeah, I just hear there's that? a there's a rock on Mars that looks like Bigfoot. And people think that there's actually Bigfoot on Mars, or do they just think that the rock looks like Bigfoot? They think that is actually Bigfoot, or like an alien I mean, or something. People okay. think that the Earth is flat. So yeah, what are you gonna do? I mean, they're right that the Earth is flat. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's, you want to expand more on that? It's flat in a sense <laughs> that we could stand on it. Yeah. There you go. Ah, there you go. Yeah, the, when I take uh, my... Uh, my uh, 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 <laughs> okay, do you have words? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that is. Mm, the little bubble thing. What? The little bubble thing. When you put down, it tells you the angle. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you talking mean. talking about a level? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, the a level. level. Right. On one of like those, you lay it on a table well, and you're like, like that table's a, level. The yeah, drywall yeah. thing. Or you hang it up. When I, when I put painting. a level on the ground <laughs> and the earth is flat. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and, then, and then the earth is flat. Are you putting right? it on an artificial structure that's no, flat? It's like out on the dirt and you, 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 it's I'm sure flat. you can situate it. I know you're joking. But do you know yeah, true right? level? <laughs> true level. Oh, like in Rick and Morty? Yeah. Oh, shit. I just could imagine how that feels like, because like you feel like the gravity is just like straight down, like everything. Wait, straight. that's such a good point. That'd be so. Because nice. like we're always on a like, yeah, sphere. Yeah, right, right. We live on a sphere, even though the Earth, the Earth is flat. Yeah, but isn't it like you have to measure like a certain distance before that curvature actually starts to occur? Yes, yeah. So like yeah. technically, you actually just are on a flat surface the whole time. Sort of. The, Maybe it the aligns thing, the gravitrons. I don't know what that is. Wait, are you talking about like UFOs? No, that's <laughs> gravity. That's what they call gravity. What? Gravity particles. Really? They call them gravitrons? Yeah. Really? I think so. Well, gravity's a wave, right? I think because the wave has to be made up of something. I think that's what they call They call gravitrons. them gravitrons. Interesting. 
because because <laughs> the Earth actually bends space time. Yes, mm. yes. Because and... we were, dude. This is so funny. Like, it's sorry. Just it's just thinking about how we were talking about this yesterday. I, don't know, I like but... to think about black holes. I think they're cool. Yeah, because they they warp space time, right? Because they're it's like that. It's like the sheet thing where you drop a ball in the middle and it like sucks. It pulls the sheet in. Yeah. Like you're literally bending space time, like pulling it inward, creating a gravitational pull. And you know how faster than light travel is not possible? I still want to say it's possible somehow. It's okay. possible with the Alcubierre drive. With a what? Alcubierre drive. What is that? It bends space time by forming a bubble around the craft. Oh. And this is like Bob Lazar's UFO stuff. Yeah, a little, I I think that's actually how they do it. Yeah, like, that, well that's how he was explaining it. it. Was like you have a you have like a gravity drive that um yeah, it creates a pocket essentially around the device right. and then you that's why they tilt sideways cuz then it says, "Oh, I want to like make gravity go this way." So then you just like do that and it just goes. And technically you're not moving faster than the speed of light because you're not moving through space time. You're not moving at all, but space time is moving around you. Yes, you can get anywhere in an instant. Just like in Futurama. Sure. That's how that's how the Futurama ship works. Does it, it doesn't move, everything moves around it. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. But like yeah. If it if that actually were the case, you wouldn't even need to travel. What do you mean? Still have to get in the ship. Yeah, it, it still feels like you are moving. Yeah. Duh. Okay, but you can like, see everything around you moving. But like, how fast do you go then? Because you're going faster than the speed of light. Are you just at the cusp, or do you potentially have the like? Do you have the potential to go at any speed you essentially want? Because you can just move everything. Well, relative to the pocket you're in, you're not moving at all. So you could go from, like, Neptune to Earth in literally no time at all. Right? Basically. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you're changing my perception on things. <laughs> That's why that, um... What? Joanne. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jesus Christ. I wrote down Joe Biden I like 12 to times on my... Actually, it's more than 12 times on no, his No, literally, it's definitely more than 12. It's just in a line. That's got to be like <laughs> Joe Biden 50 times in a row. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I really have any more thoughts, but unless you have something else you want to say, we can go for it. I'll dig into something else if you got any more ideas for me. Can I say Joe Biden 12 times? I really would prefer if you don't. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? Oh, man. And I think, because when I start a work week, I'm like, man, I have a whole week ahead of me of work that's going to suck. But then when I think about, oh, I already did a week of work. Like <laughs> infinite times. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> one. I've done it before I can do it again. You've done it it's so many times already that, yeah. It's one week less. But like Monday rolls around and you're like, oh God, this week is going to literally take a year of my life. But it's actually only a week. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Although time, the perception of time is relative. So to someone it could feel like forever that week. But to some people that week went by really quickly. So. And I always think of the time remaining of like... Mm -hmm. So, like, let's say it's, like, 2.04, because mm -hmm. I work third shift. It's 2.04 in the morning, and I stop work at 6. Mm. I'm like, man, I got four more or four more hours. And the more you keep track of the time, the slower it goes. But then you think, I've already worked four hours. I exactly. have to do it again. Or, do even, I yeah. Or, I, this is the way I do it. Sorry. No, I no. Um, I'd say... I got three hours and 56 minutes left. <laughs> and then I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, so I have to do 15 minutes four times for it to be an hour. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, so if I can find something to do for 15 minutes four times, then an hour would go by. So I should, you know, I'm like, I'm like measuring things in yeah. increments trying to figure it out. It like, definitely makes it go slower though. It, it absolutely does. <laughs> <Because, laughs> because you're, you're essentially watching a pop oil. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. And I, I always just... <laughs> I feel like it goes by really fast when I briefly think about it. Mm -hmm. And then put it out of your mind. And right. then just, yeah. just, just think just about thinking. nothing or right. mm -hmm. just like, just think about like some like random thing that happened or like what I'm playing, like, or something yeah. I could improve on. Yeah. I feel like your job is potentially worse when it comes to, uh, like time flying by quickly because I, like, correct me if I'm wrong based on my understanding of your job, but you'll like, 
set up a machine and you're like, okay, cut these things. And now you stand there and you just wait for this thing to cut this. <laughs> you know? So, like, literally probably half your job is just standing around and waiting. No, actually, um, so... And so when I'm running two machines, okay, <laughs> things are a little bit different because uh, okay. I still have to inspect each part from each machine and the time that it takes it for it to finish the part that it's making. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so I have to be moving around all the day, all the time. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like it just makes it go by quicker then. Yeah, but... Yeah, if you're active, if you're, like, busy on something, usually... But sometimes I only get... I think the shortest one that I ran was like 30 seconds. Mm. That means nothing to me because I don't know how your machines or your job and works. the part gets <laughs> one flip, so I have to remember that there's a flip. Uh. And if you don't, you just destroy the entire yeah. piece, like uh. which probably gets and the thousands machine. of dollars. Oh, and the machine. And the machine. Oh, didn't that happen to someone like a couple months did. ago? It did. It did. The machine like blew up? Uh, he was setting up the machine because he was programming. Mm. Cause he's one of the, so I'm not. I, don't, I used to do that. I don't do that because I, I don't like that. Because you don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy. Right. No, 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 that's not for me. That's why I took this job. It's a lot easier. Um, he was setting up the machine, mm. and he forgot one line of code. Mm. One line, literally, it was like, it was G. The code was like G97, and he wanted a G96. Mm. And that means like he wanted the. Because it spins, it grabs the piece, and it spins it. And he wanted uh, the constant surface finish, so it, as the cutter would go by on the x-axis, it would speed up to keep the surface finish nice and clean. Interesting. But he put in the wrong code, which was, I think, just the spindle speed code. And oh, and I have it switched around. Sorry, it would be like the other way it would be he wanted he wanted the constant surf or he wanted the spindle speed but he put the constant surface gotcha so he put like 3000 rpm because it would speed up and then oh, it would stop and go back to normal speed so he started the program this and remind, remind you this is a piece of steel like a cylinder of steel mm. like yeah that weighs <laughs> upwards to like 75 to 100 pounds Spinning at 3,000 RPM. Being held by three metal jaws. And those, those aren't, these aren't like, like little, like little, no, they're like metal jaws, like, that hold like it. the most industrial clamps you've ever seen. In yeah. Life. And that holds it with like, like, I want to say like a ton of pressure. Mm. Like li a literal ton of <laughs> pressure on the piece. And, well, if it was too much, it would kind of crush it. But it like balances it out. So it's like, holds it pretty nice and firm. It won't move, but he started that and it spun like 3,000 RPM. The piece ripped out of the metal jaws, hit the door, Wait, the I'm jaws sorry. hit so the door. Is this, is this, I'm sorry, so this metal piece that's spinning, is it inside of a glass containment? Or like, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's fine. Phones happen. Um, is it inside of like a glass containment center or like is it in a separate room or like uh, like what happens when this thing blows up are you like within so, the vicinity let's say let's say this area right here i get two times the area of this table okay so you maybe get like six feet that's that's the area i walk around in oh shit. the machines are on the other side wow that's terrifying so you're just in like a box well there's like a hallway like okay but Okay. Then there's a control panel where the window machine is, but yeah. there's metal doors that slide and open and close. Okay. There's so like solid steel and they have bulletproof glass. When it blows up, it's supposed to stay in there. Yeah. Okay. So what happens? So the door, the door <laughs> completely destroyed. Like there's like a the glass. It has like three layers. There's like like a regular glass, like you know, like it shatters. Then there's like a plastic to keep the, the coolant out and then there's like this third layer of like like bulletproof glass. bulletproof yeah. like, like heavy duty yeah, yeah like it doesn't even feel like glass i don't think like i felt it felt actually it kind of does feel like glass but i know it's not glass because i knock on it it doesn't feel like it what the hell would it be then 
I don't know, but that thing's that thing got dented. Like it was, you could see a literal dent. Wait, a dent, like a dent in glass. In glass. That's so weird. It was, and the door, you could see the Im, imprint with the jaws. Like it was all spinning, and it ripped out of the jaws. So the two jaws were like went into the door Holy and shit. knocked around in the machine. And that door was destroyed. <laughs> and I was just like, I was just on the other machine on the other side. And I was just like, I turned around. That guy's running. I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 he tried to stop it, but it was too late. I was like, I turned around just in time to see that thing just like, oh my, oh my, oh my God. <laughs> Did he get fired? No, he's been there for like, 25 30 years okay so they're like yeah you slip up once in that amount of time it's like whatever anything and let me, let me tell you anything could happen yeah that's insane dude. as long as you're not careful shit that's wow. why i'm only running the simple machines and not dealing with any of that i don't have to worry about pressing a green button well any final words i think that sometimes when you Think outside the box, you expand your horizons. Don't be an ignorant egg. Take into consideration other people's opinions, even if you don't think they're right. If anything, it can only benefit you to learn the other side of the argument because then you are more prepared to counteract the other point of view and or you might find out that you actually believe something new, which is beneficial. And always question your beliefs because they're probably wrong. Yes, 100%. Oh, yeah, just constantly be <laughs> yes. changing your beliefs. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for hopping on. It was probably a short episode, but that's okay, because sometimes you don't need to take minutes. two hours to talk about something. So. It's actually a decent, decently long episode. Nice. Hey. Yeah. Sweet. Let's go. Are we pog champs yet? I... Uh, I would, I would consider us, yes. Pod Let's champs? go. Let's pod fucking champs. go. What does pod champs mean? Pog. Oh, Pog change. champs. I still don't know what that means. It's like epic, but more gamer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what the fuck? <laughs> Probably, when is this episode supposed to release? When do we have it scheduled for? Dick o'clock. Anyway, thanks for joining us. <laughs> oh, we're